Hey, what's up guys, Bobo Rail here, and on Monday, we finally got our hands on Isanzo's Caporetto expansion. This is a free update containing the first of three maps we'll be getting over the next six months, and with it, of course, comes the addition of the German faction. That means German guns, uniforms, and equipment are now ours to play around with, and the new map, Caporetto, is shaping up to be an overall favorite for me. So without further delay, let's get into the muddy details of all this new content. So I've got a good number of hours on this map and with the German faction so far, and my initial reactions are pretty positive. I think that some of Isanzo's base game maps tend to struggle with the attacker defender balancing, and as a result they end up getting stuck in long stalemates where little to no progress is made on either side. On one hand this is perfectly encapsulating of fighting in World War 1, so it's not a huge negative, but at the same time it can lead to some pretty boring gameplay experiences. And I think in this case, Caporetto has found a very good balance in the way that the map plays in a large scale. I never really felt like the attackers were fully locked in with no options of attack, and generally the pacing feels really good across the entire thing, allowing me to get a pretty solid experience out of every objective sector. That in combination with the small scale attention to detail and level design that the devs have started to master at this point makes me feel very optimistic about the other expected maps in the future. And really, in my opinion, this is shaping up to be the best map not just in Isanzo, but of all all the maps in the series period. I'm sure that's a relatively controversial opinion, but the game's updates and graphics really push this muddy dark aesthetic to the next level. And part of that is unlike Verdun and Tannenberg, the color palette and overall saturation that comes with Isanzo really makes the map feel more alive than its similar counterparts in previous games. The most notable example of this is the yellows and oranges in the fall foliage, but these brighter highlights are also present in other less obvious circumstances. So overall, I really like the way this map looks and plays because it takes the more traditional World War 1 atmosphere of the previous games and applies it with much more finesse, making for a pretty fantastic gameplay loop. So now let's switch gears a bit and talk about the German faction specifically, because there are lots of very familiar but noticeably different assets among the German forces that I think have been significantly improved on in Isanzo. What I mean by this is that even though these are a lot of the same guns from Tannenberg and Verdun, they really do feel much different than they did in those games. All the bolt actions just feel a lot more satisfying because of the animations, effects, and sounds that coincide with them. That being said, my personal favorite weapon is the Luger, which just seems to have much more consistent damage than the other assault pistols, and the animation of the action kicking back is incredibly satisfying. Another weapon that I think is much better in Isanzo than in previous games is the scoped rifle for the Germans. I've said it before, but I'll mention it again, the slightly better FOV and the sensitivity being aligned with the regular rifles makes magnified optics feel much more usable in Isanzo than it ever has been. Now, the one weapon I sort of have a gripe with is the Assault's MG-08. It, to me, feels a bit too mobile for what it is, and the sensitivity change between standing and bipodded is very steep. I like the gun's model and animations a lot, but a stronger debuff to sprint speed and maybe even a faster stamina drain when holding it would help with its balancing, because for its size, I still feel like it's a bit too easy to run and gun with it. There are also a good amount of cosmetics that were added for the Germans, and I'm not a big one for cosmetics myself, but I'll show the overview images for them. They look really cool, and I still think the devs do a good job of adding some variety with them while still maintaining historical accuracy. One very minor gripe I have with this update is the lack of a German offensive playlist that runs exclusively Caporetto. And I know I'm not alone in this because every time a game ends and it switches to Dolomites, full servers will drop down to like 10 players as everyone, including myself, backs out to go find another Caporetto lobby. For right now, I get it, because we only have one map, but in the future when we get one or two more to make it a complete campaign, it'd be nice to have different official servers running the Austro-Hungarian and German campaigns independently. Now, I've seen some people in the past complain about performance. I'm playing on Xbox Series S, and I think the game is certainly designed to be played on next gen and or PC. Personally, I've held a locked 60 FPS in pretty much my entire gameplay experience, and I play on the quality setting with an uncapped frame rate. 
The only thing I could really nitpick out concerning graphics would be maybe more improvements to anti-aliasing. I know it's been changed back and forth a few times since launch, and it doesn't look terrible by any measure, but sometimes foliage in particular can look pretty blocky at distance. I'm sure that's not as much of an issue on PC because you can go in and flip through all your settings individually, but on console we've only got one or two options, so you know, we're kind of stuck with it. Overall, I hope you've been enjoying this expansion as much as I have, and if you haven't been, then I'd love to hear why in the comments below. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. This has been Bobo Rail here from the Christopher Beast channel, and I'll catch you all in the next one.